SOS. All right. This is what we're going to do here. We are going to simulcast with Cowboy Nation and Eagle Nation. And Mark and I have been working on this. By the way, every Wednesday at 3.30, we are going to do this. And if there's questions in both, we're going to be able to use his chat, our chat, and we'll ask questions if you guys have some common sense comments. So will that – and further ado, we bring in Mark Holmes. How you doing, brother? I'm doing really good, man. I am doing actually really – I've been listening to some of your show, and I've been seeing the warm-up there with some of your fans, man. They've been killing me in there, man. I mean, damn. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but, you know, they say there's no such thing as bad publicity. So we're definitely getting some hype. And I appreciate uh, you bringing me on here. You know, uh, I'm just a guy from his mama's basement. You know how that is. <laughs> oh, and, 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 and mama's panties. I forgot. You know, you got oh. we got to keep context here. We got to keep there context go. here. There you go. Um, I, I, I was sitting here listening to the Melt Carton Parsons, as in he is uh, missing in action. Yeah. Okay. You know what's interesting? Um, well, where was he in the San Francisco? Where, where was, was everybody? Green Bay game? Nowhere. Where Where was everybody though, Dan? I'll be honest. Well, with you. if I get this though, Mark, here's the thing though: you want me to pay you thirty million? You yeah. can't be. Where is everyone? He can't be in the conversation of everyone. I can agree with that. You know, it's a, you know, I'm going to say, I was warming up my my crowd here. And I was saying that there's a lot of people out there that don't like you, that are Eagle fans, right? They tell me he's not an Eagle fan and things like that. And I realize why it is, because you don't tell people what they want to hear. You actually tell them the truth. And the truth hurts and people get butt hurt when they do hear the truth. Because fanatics and fans, Mark, they're, they're, they're two different people. Like when mm -hmm. I heard the press conference yesterday with Howie Roseman, mm -hmm. my biggest problem that I had with the whole thing was, was that no one asked the question where, Hey, was it true that, uh, by the way, Prince, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, is it true that Bill Belichick was considered for the head coaching job? ESPN has reported that, you know what I would have said that he could have said, that's a stupid question. It's an mm -hmm. erroneous report. Okay, well, that's called doing your job. Okay, is it true there was a report out there that Big Dom controls Sirianni's emotions on the sideline? Someone who works at our, our network put that out. He's really respected, and Derek Gunn got oh. over a million views on it. National topic. Carton even hit on it. That's stupid. Okay, thank you for addressing it. The problem that you have today in society is, and you and I have talked about this, these guys are key fob whores where they want accessibility to the cowboy complex at Valley Ranch, and mm -hmm. they also want to have it at the NovaCare Center to make sure that they get their smoothie. So they're not going to ask the tough question because they are afraid to ask the decent question. Get this. So a, a reporter was asked a question on Hassan Reddick. Howie Roseman goes, it's a win-win. You're not getting any restitution for the Hassan Reddick deal for three years. The Jets haven't given Reddick a contract extension. Mm -hmm. You could have played the kid on his current deal like Javon Hardgrave played, and you could have had the better player. But no, win-win means this. He didn't want to play for Fangio. Yeah, Fangio didn't want to coach him. They used the contract to get him out of there, and the Jets got the better player. But people don't want to hear that. Well, you know, um, I don't want to do want, want to ask you any questions that may get you into trouble because I know you've got Stephen Jones who's been, you know, on your show many times and that you are, you know, close to them. So well, anything I'll tell you one thing you, that's happened. Let me tell you one up? thing that's happened with the Cowboys and me. Their new PR guy, instead yeah. of going through our uh, dear friend who is his special assistant, Mm -hmm. is being more of a watchdog over the Joneses as of late because of mm -hmm. some of the questions. 
that have been asked and some of the things that I have brought up about the Cowboys. Let me pose this one to you first. Um, you know, I, I, I look at Dak Prescott and yeah. I look at Micah Parsons and CeeDee Lamb. And they say this, and Stephen Jones came out either today or yesterday, and he said, well, we've got to pull back money and hold back money because, I'm paraphrasing here, because we got to pay these guys. Those three guys are not going to lead you to a Super Bowl. Not by themselves. See, You're going to okay. overpay again for guys – What's the difference between Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins? Here's the thing. Okay, let, let, let me let me say it this way. I will say that the Eagles and the Cowboys are in two totally different directions and philosophies, okay? The Joneses believe that, you know, we've got this great player, and so we've got to pay him, we got to hold on to him to get there. But they don't realize that that's not enough. The Eagles aren't good at drafting and so they are gotten to be good with free agency and so they believe that's the way it's going to work with them because you look at it uh my, my son philly 500 is sitting here is is pissed about uh jordan davis looking like he's been hanging out with him eating donuts and things and so this is where cowboys get killed because they don't do anything at free agency and you could say that it needs to be a mix of both the Eagles, they get praised for all they do in free agency, but they don't really get killed where they screw up in the draft. Because it's a sexy band-aid. When you sign, when you sign a player like a Devin White, thank you, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. When you sign a player like Devin White, who has been outside of one year a complete bust for Malashu. Yeah. Walk that get this. He did this to the Bucks. He asked for $100 million. The Bucks said, take a hike. He signed for $3 million. That's a $97 million haircut when it comes to a player who had lower grades than Zach mm -hmm. Cunningham, who was a cast-off player that the Eagles put on the team. And I go like this, okay? The problem that I turn around with the Cowboys and say, you got Jerry Jones coming out, praising his draft picks before the draft picks even put on a Cowboy Helmet. Oh my God, yes. And Mozzie so Smith is a complete bust. Now, I like your point, what you made. You said, put him in a nose. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that transpires. My question is, do you have four linebackers that could play a 34? Not yet. Not yet. Now, and here's what well, I will it say. It is April 17th. It, but see, that you're going by um, – the typical media look at it. Here's here's what the Cowboys do. They don't. They they never do shit. I want you to go back a couple of years ago when they got rid of Amari Cooper. They let go our number three wide receiver and Cedric Wilson. Right. Yeah. Now of course they said just to your point, Jalen Tolbert, a third round draft pick. Oh, he's going to be great. He they believed in him before he even put on the first uniform, and his first year he was ass ass. And the Cowboys also let go of Randy Gregory. Stephen Jones goes through and says, you know, production-wise, Dorrance Armstrong is right there with Randy Gregory. Everybody killed him and said, you're freaking nuts. You don't know what the hell you're talking. No wonder we can't win the Super Bowl because you can't evaluate talent. You think that Dorrance Armstrong is as good as Randy Gregory, right? Yeah. And they didn't sign any big free agents. They signed James Washington as a receiver. I called him the unicorn because you never saw him on the damn field. <laughs> um, literally, he played like three plays and had one drop, okay? Um, you signed because you believed in Michael Gallup, a guy that you drafted who had a torn ACL, whose production was going down for two years. He's still a guy we drafted, and we're going to sign him to a long-term deal. That's their problem. But – to his credit, he was right about Dorrance Armstrong. Now everybody is crying that Dorrance Armstrong, you know, we let that guy go, but they actually have Sam Williams, who is in his third year. And if you actually, I, I did this comparison because it kind of blew me away. He got about half the snaps of Dorrance Armstrong, but had almost more than half production wise in his second year. If he ends up stepping up talent wise, that may be as good as Bryce Hoff, because when I look at Bryce Hoff, if you look at his numbers, his stats, 
He had 10 sacks last year. Everybody, you know, Philly 500 is going crazy. Oh, my God, we got Bryce Huff. Yeah, but why didn't but, he start well, in New York? Well, but here's – again, when did he start? But was that a contract year that he played well? Because the years before, two sacks, three sacks, two sacks. And then I all think of a sudden, you're wonder. Just like Jason Hatcher was for our Cowboys. I think Every he's year a in his career. Wonder, Mark, get this. Yeah. He's got some of the lowest grades, Bryce Huff. Mm -hmm. on pass coverage, and also on run stopping of any perimeter defensive outside rusher in pro football. Now, pro football focus is not the Bible. However, when mm -hmm. you start putting two, three years together where a guy can't stop the run and cover, That's that rough. defense was 27th. No, it was 31st last year in pass defense. Where have you upgraded? I don't. I, I, I was going to ask you there that that one myself because everybody's talking about how great the Eagles are. I, I I honestly don't see it on that defense. Jordan Davis, you know, you need him to be a three down player. Is he going to be able to have the wind to, to be able to do that? No, he's not lived up to that. But let me be fair here now mm -hmm. to Eagles. Your offensive line. When are you going to address that? I mean, quite frankly. Do you think you have a good enough offensive line to win a Super Bowl right now, let alone the <laughs> NFC East? From where I'm sitting, I'll take your offensive line, bro. <laughs> Dude, that offensive line compared to your offensive line is like that's an all-star old line. That's what I'm I saying. You, you, you literally are crying about your offensive line. No, no. Actually, <laughs> this is one of the things that they do exceptionally well is drafting the uh, offensive line. How can you give Zach Martin a ton of shit for wanting more money? And you're talking about a guy who gets run over in Parsons, and that guy, Zach Martin's going to the Hall of Fame. Parsons mm -hmm. is not. not and that guy is more ball. instrumental for Dak's protection than what it is going to be. You're never going to win a Super Bowl by paying a perimeter guy, a pass rusher, $30 million. Name me one. Not by themselves. Not by themselves at all. And see, this is there's the thing about the Cowboys, and it's not just right now. You know, Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones, they love their superstars because they sell the jerseys and the fan favorites and everything else, you know. But it's not necessarily what's going to win you. When you think about New England, when it was Tom Brady, you know, of course it was Gronk, but after that, it wasn't really superstars. And but they were deep. They could lose a player without going down to like a Chaz Green when you lost a Tyron Smith. Lost your integrity. Yeah. And and see, you can go back to Tony Romo and think about Jason Witten, Des Bryant, um, Tony Romo, uh, Demarcus Ware. Literally seven, eight guys took up 50% of the money. And if you're doing that, then you've got 45 guys that got to feast on half of what's left over. So now you're paying guys that have to pay substantial minutes that may not be that good. Now, to the Cowboys' benefit, the only reason why they are at least somewhat successful is because they are good at drafting for the most part. And they are good at finding guys after the draft that end up being decent players. The last 10 years, the Dallas Cowboys have drafted 15 Pro Bowlers, and the second team is the Ravens mm -hmm. at 12. Now, so I, they I, do I, I will draft. Say I will say part of that, though, is misleading because the fans also vote for that. Okay. You, you know, know, to your point to your point on New England, Mark, mm -hmm. here's to show you that, and this is why I say this about both Dak and Jalen Hurts, that these guys aren't superstar players. The difference between Brady and Mahomes, and by the way, Obviously, they're the right guys. They're generational players. However, can you name me one Hall of Fame football player in New England that Tom Brady won with outside of Gronkowski? Or how about this? That was drafted in the first round. Even Gronk. Sure. Yeah. He was a second rounder. Can you name me one with anybody or Hall of Famer outside of Gronkowski that they won Super Bowls in New England? And on the other hand, in Kansas City, Tyree Kill won the one. He's won two in a row now because mm -hmm. they didn't want to pay him. They sent him to Miami. They don't need him. 
Mm-hmm. So there's not one Hall of Fame guy in the offense in New Kansas City, and there's not one Hall of Famer at wide receiver, running back in New England during the entire 25 years that Tom Brady was in New England. But yet when you look at Dallas and you look at Philly, Philadelphia has got the richest offense payroll-wise, I think, in pro football right now. you got two $25 million Mm -hmm. wide receivers and you got a 50 million dollar you got 98 million dollars tied up in three players right and we'll see how that works out but here's what i will say though see this is the difference and you know stephen jones basically going on yesterday saying that you know you got to save the money to be able to pay these three guys and so on which keep you relevant but see here's the problem okay now i don't know how you feel about them signing uh, Devontae Smith to that contract. But see, here's the thing that's different. Because they still had this year to work with, because they actually had the uh, fifth-year option to work with, they're paying him today in today's dollars, but they're not paying it really on the cap until down the road. This is what – they're not paying him really, Mark, for three years. And Exactly. Guy is one thing he does well. Roseman and Associates. If we could does just... a great job with this, he does this. Six point four this year. They mm-hmm. picked up the fifth year option, fifteen one, and then in the third year, the escalators kick into twenty five. So in theory, they're not really paying right two twenty five million dollar wide receivers. This is where the Cowboys get into mistakes, oh. where they pay these guys on the back end. And mm-hmm. they get hammered on the back end of those contracts with a lot of dead money. Going. Yeah, and see, this is the thing that that I, I don't know if it's the Joneses just don't know how to do this. If they're too cheap to hire somebody that knows it, but see, when you think about Zach Martin, where he basically held out last year, when he signed his contract, I think he was the second highest paid guard in football. But then a couple of years down the road, you look at it and say, well, shit. I'm not getting paid, but like 10th now. That'll be Devontae Smith in three years. But in the meantime, you've got him happy, you've got him whole, and you've got money to use elsewhere on other resources. That is the problem with the Cowboys. They're not forward thinking. They're always more reactionary to stuff instead of proactive saying, how can we increase the money? How can we make this impact less? To have Dak Prescott's last year of a $40 million contract at $55 million, and you don't have the foresight to say, we need to do something with this. To sit here with C.D. Lamb and dick around with this, or are you waiting for Justin Jefferson to get his, so it'll cost you even more? You should have did this shit last year. How about this, Mark? That's crazy. Here's the biggest problem that Dallas has when it comes to constructing teams since Jimmy left, Mm -hmm. is that he doesn't know his weakness and his weakness is he falls in love with his Cowboys instead of like, Mm -hmm. you know, Jimmy always told me fall in like with your players, not Mm -hmm. in love because there'll be a tough decision that you have to make when it comes to jettisoning one of these players. And you have to have structural integrity on your, on your salary cap. You have to have, Uh, a great, you have to make the tough cuts. He refuses to make the tough decisions that dicking around with, with Dak Prescott's contract cost him money and evaluation time. I mean, quite frankly, you don't have a head guy in charge in the locker room. The, The head, this is what he is. The autonomy of the locker room and the leadership of the locker room starts at the GM The integrity of the drafting of the personnel starts with the general manager. The constructing of the contracts starts with the general manager. This is what Jimmy did when he was in Dallas. Jimmy Mm -hmm. never called plays. He let his coaches do all that. Jimmy ran the draft, and he looked at the evaluating of the coaches and the job they were doing, and he made total autonomy decisions when it came to personnel moves on what he wanted to do. And since that guy has left that building, Steven and Jerry think that they can replace the triplets. Here's your new triplets, Dak, mm-hmm. CD. Oh, Mike. Geez. You, you just brought up a whole nother thing here. Because here, Jerry is still here. living that's, in the freaking past, bro. Modern day. Well, that's what it is. Watch this. A Zeke, Amari, Dak. Well, 
Those guys aren't Michael Irvin. Those guys aren't Emmett. You've mm-hmm. got to evolve. He's never, he has not evolved since 1996. And that's why the Cowboys have less victories in the postseason than the Bengals do. See, I hate you, man. I hate you because you're telling the damn truth, man. Stop it. Try to make me feel a little bit better here, man. You got How me. About this on the, here, here, here's, 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 here's the, what makes it so delusional with Cowboy fans. We always the believe. greatest off-season fan base on the planet, and it reminds me of my Canes. We win recruiting wars. We're going to be preseason. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about preseason. I don't give a shit about any of that. I care about winning championships. Don't talk to me about recruiting wars. Talk to me about wars in September. And the Cowboys, when they get into those situations, Green Bay is a great example of it. The Mm -hmm. entire organization from the top, the owner, down to the head coach and position coaches and the players, gagged. Yeah. Just out now, gagged. You have home field. If you, Mark, if you weren't okay, going to win a okay, Super Bowl, okay. all right, all right, you didn't shit on me enough here, okay? <laughs> if you didn't win a Super Bowl last year, that football team will never win a Super Bowl as long as Jerry Jones is the owner and operator of that football team. It's over. It, well, I, I, I hate to to okay. I, I, yes, you were probably right. I can still dream, can I? But the Cowboys had a flaw, and that's the middle of the field. They could not control the middle of the field. Stopping the run and running the football. Now, I don't know if they're going to do anything about it, but I will say I believe their plan is we're going to keep our powder dry. We're going to basically play dead. We're going to try and do the best we can at the draft. I think that they may actually move backwards and try and get more players in here, more on the offensive line, because I think they can – get two starting offensive linemen if they trade back and get a running back. And then in that next wave of free agency, when they get that money from Michael Gallup, when they finally do get CD lambs, then get your fill in guys. And maybe they will be a little more aggressive. They so you think they least, moved down from 24. I think they could. Cause you know, when they have moved back, it has been beneficial to them. I remember in 2012 being outside a radio music, uh, music hall, and they traded with San Francisco to move back, I think, four spaces. And they took Travis Frederick, and they got Terrence Williams with a third-round pick. I can look at it and say them moving back with Micah was another one that's good. And the Cowboys, more than anything else, they stick with what has worked for them before, which is why they're still living back in the 90s. You know, they keep doing the same thing. But you, you shit on my team enough now. Okay, I, I got to feel a little bit better here because I got to ask you. Bring it on. Uh, is Nick Seriani, and I'm going to tell you what has happened with Nick Seriani reminds me Jason Garrett because Jason Garrett, when he was the prodigal son, you know, he was hired by Jerry. He's you know a guy he knows. He had that great Thanksgiving game and stuff. When he was failing, they took away play calling duties. And we all looked around and we're like, he's not calling the offense. He's not coaching anybody. You know, what is his role? He's just there as a figurehead. And I feel like that's your coach, Nick Sirianni. Am I wrong? Nick Sirianni, his name should be Pinocchio. He reminds me of a vampire. He has no job. And remember this. When he had play calling duties, like you said, they were two and five. Mm -hmm. Shane Steichen took him over. Shane Steichen is showing you in Indianapolis what he's doing with Anthony Richardson, that he looks like he is going to be a formidable coach. I personally look at him. I think Jason Garrett's a better coach than he is. Oh, shit. (laughs) Shots fired. Okay. Oh, damn. That's cold. I think Jason Garrett's a better coach than Nick Sirianni. Oh, wow. Tell me one thing he does that's a redeeming I, quality. There's nothing. There's he gets not, my see, what you're going to find out a problem with me. Yeah. I'm going to shit on your team and my team. I, I love it when you shit on your team. L- let me be clear here. Yeah, but I it's easier that. to shit on your team because for 30 years, you guys parade around like you've won 14 Super Bowls. Okay. Well, you, you've, you've now told me that I'm not winning shit 
with Dak, Micah, and CD. Are you going to win shit with, with Jalen Hurts? He did I'm go to a Super Bowl. He did, but was it because of him? In 22, when he finished second in the MVP? Yeah. Okay. Now, I would say if the Was Cowboys – like, I, I tell you he what. He played like Lamar did this last year, but better. Okay. Do you see that further. going forward? Because he didn't look like the same quarterback last year that he was the year before. He, they're, they're, what's happening is there's too much meddling going on like there was with Wentz that they're trying to – like when Wentz was playing and they were 11-2 before he got hurt at the Los Angeles game at the Coliseum, I thought he was the first coming of Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. When he got injured, they didn't want him running. They didn't want him doing all that. They tried to evolve him into a drop-back quarterback, pat, 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 sack, fumble, field position up, field goal, touchdown. The, guy, the thing went to total – mess what they mm-hmm. did last year they hired an inexperienced offensive coordinator mm-hmm. and they get this how can you hire an inexperienced offensive coordinator and ask the guy to throw more when that's not his top skill set right that's why he was second in turnovers and you think so Kelly I Moore's gonna fix this? And I, mark you're not gonna here here's the thing i look at jalen i personally think he's Tyrod Taylor 2.0 a little better. Um, Eagle fans, how do y'all feel about that? No, no, wait. No, look, though. Here's one thing. If they go back to 22, he's a weapon because Mm -hmm. of the RPOs. But they're not doing that. He has the capability, Mark, to take a team to a Super Bowl. But the organization is getting in the way like the organization gets in the way of Dak. Ah, now I've heard some rumors um, that, you know, we, we all know that Jerry and Stephen Jones are knee deep in everything. They've got their shows and stuff that, you know, that they are in there running things and all that. I've kind of heard a, a little bit that it's kind of that way with the Eagles, but just not out in front. Oh, no, it is lot. totally because here, Mark, watch this. This was the press conference yesterday. And let me show you on what the Eagles and show you that this is very Jerry Jones like. And I could probably just replace Howie Roseman with Stephen and Jerry here. Mm -hmm. Um, They call free agency um, mistakes gaps Uh, instead of mistakes in the draft. Mm -hmm. The dude said, Howie Roseman, that the Reddick was a win win. And I'm like, this, I I got you, uh, Jalen. Thank you. They go like this. Reddick was a win-win. Well, you're not getting compensation for three years. The guy's under the same contract. How is that a win-win? You got the lesser player in Bryce Huff. Yeah. Uh, Vic Fangio has had an influence the last three years on the personnel and the direction of the scheme, which means this. So when he got the job, you didn't want Hassan Reddick on the team, and that's why he's not on the team. He's in New York. They also said that um, (laughs) – This was Sirianni answering a question from a press person. Hey, dude, um, what kind of player do you want, Nick? Well, Howie really does a lot of homework. Him and his people, you can't imagine the type of work that goes into the players and then the final decision that he makes when he picks the players. So the head coach doesn't pick his coaching staff. He doesn't pick Mm -hmm. his players. He shows up on Sunday, and he has big Dom – there to manage his ego and his attitude so he doesn't scream at fans too much. So to your point, there is some, I mean, the Cowboys and the Eagles are almost in the same position, but it's ownership and it's GM wise to this. You guys win a lot, but you don't win when it counts. Important games. Okay. You're the GM for the Dallas. There's Cowboys. no getting around it. I, I agree. What do you do differently? Besides lock up Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones in a room and just say, just just stay away from it. This comes down to Jeffrey Lurie and Jerry Jones doing this. Don't you, you and me are football players, Mark. If you get punched in the face 31 times, eventually you're going to duck, ain't you? Yeah. Well, Jerry hasn't ducked. 
No, he has not. He keeps doing the same damn thing over and over again. And and he needs a capologist. He needs a capologist. I'll tell you one thing this guy, Howie Roseman, does do. He does he He is the best cap management and contract general manager of anybody in the league. He's spectacular at it. Mm -hmm. However, when he dips his beak into the the sandbox of personnel, they haven't drafted a corner in 20 years. That's Mm -hmm. successful. They haven't drafted a linebacker. That's successful. They haven't drafted an edge rusher. That's been successful since he's been ahead of the personnel. I mean, why would you, if you're Jeffrey Lurie, continue to hand him opportunities to go out there and still make mistakes in the draft when he's not qualified? He's not qualified to be the general manager and personnel. And neither, in my opinion, is Jerry. He's not. That's Jerry's ego. You remember, do you remember Tony Tolbert? Yes. Okay. Jimmy found him in the third round. Remember James Washington? Oh, yeah. Found him in the latter round. Did the, yeah. They found they a lot of They did the due diligence on Larry Allen, who was drafted in like the 12th round before he left and then Switzerland yeah. brought him in with Bob Ackles. These guys were great, not only in the first round, but when Jimmy put the value chart together, that's what made him, Mark, build See, that Cowboy team. Jerry, oh my God, Jimmy, well, let's be clear here. Jerry's not winning the Super Bowl without Jimmy, and Jimmy's not winning one without Jerry. Absolutely and not, worked, and absolutely totally true. Um, because Jerry took care of the money and everything else. But Jimmy was great as far as the personnel. The fact that he ended up getting a number one pick for Steve Walsh, you know, the finding Nate. Newton, I mean, yeah, it was the number one and other stuff with it. He was constantly bringing in talent and finding the right kind of guys. He wasn't afraid to go ahead and make a move and say, you know, we're going to get rid of our best player and see what we can get for it. We're going to take a chance on a guy like Charles Haley, who – you know, couldn't get along in San Francisco and end up doing great things with them. Now, the thing is, I know you've killed my Cowboys because you look and say, that can't with CD and all that and so on. You're right. They cannot win a Super Bowl like that. What Micah needs is he needs a Robin on the other side. He needs some linemen in there. He is a guy that if you can use him as a specialist that can create havoc, but the problem is, is we got this mentality from Stephen Jones, and I don't want to fuck up your relationship with Stephen Jones or anything. But I don't want to hear position flex ever again. <laughs> okay, listen. If you got a way guy, that was created after Jimmy left, uh, position flex. The fact that you look at it and say, well, you know, I've got a defensive end that can play tackle. And, you know, really a tackle is a defensive lineman. So we can be a one technique guy. You know, I got a safety and, you know, he can play linebacker and all. No, listen. You do that in junior football. But that's what the Cowboys do. We are constantly, we've taken wide receivers and and tried to make them tight ends, okay? We ended up having Lyle Collins, who was a great guard, and say, we want you to be a tackle. He puts on too much weight and fucks up his hips. We had a, a tight end, Enrico. Um, Dude, there's too much overcoaching uh, and too much micromanaging uh, in Dallas. And that's the problem. Just step like, away. Give me a defensive tackle that only thing he knows is being a defensive tackle. If you are a tackle defensive end, you're too light to be a defensive tackle and you're too big to be an edge rusher. You can do them, but you're not going to do them exceptionally well. And this goes back to, I've got to make do because I've fucked up with the cap. Here, Mark, I want to, I want to give your and everyone a, a, a historical background. And by the way, I want to show a lot of your people that are there. And I showed you this last Uh-oh, time. Here we go. Okay. I was in the building when they were building the Super Bowl teams. Yes. I was they in the building. Played, you played with the Cloud Cowboys. Yeah. Stadium. That right yeah. there. Okay. First Landry actually brought me in, but because my uncle played for Coach Landry uh, when they were in New York and he was the D coordinator in New mm-hmm. York when they were there with Lombardi. So let me. Let me say this to you here. When they got the job for Jimmy to leave and go to Dallas, coaching mm-hmm. the University of Miami, as everyone knows, 
He said, I have to have complete control. Jerry goes like this. No problem. I've got a lot to mess because um, Bum Bright and everyone, Gil and all them people had completely destroyed the Cowboys financially. They were mm -hmm. ruined. So Jerry walked in there, leveraged every cent that he had, bought the team for like $150 million. He didn't have a cent. They fired everyone. They kept five people in the building. Mm -hmm. Five of those people or three of those people are still there because they wanted some continuity. They even kept Gil on for the draft when they got Aikman. That mm -hmm. was always a foregone conclusion that Aikman was going to be in the room. However, Jimmy made it very clear that we are under complete autonomy for me making all personnel decisions coaching wise. And also mm -hmm. when it came to personnel and on top of that, all those Miami hurricane coaches he brought that they won three Super Bowls with yeah. were the lowest paid coaches in the national football league at the time. You know why Jimmy wanted them hungry. He wanted them hungry because he knew this is in the one in 15 year. We're going through mini camps. Randy mm -hmm. white retires. Um, you had all these other players that were veteran guys just walking out of the building. Ed stayed, and I was happy that he stayed. I got a chance to play a little bit with him. But this was how it went down. I mean, the Herschel Walker deal is a great example. They go under legendary noon run. He mm -hmm. looks over at Dave Wanstad. This is in the offseason. He goes, why am I keeping Herschel Walker? What's the point? And he goes like this. So they got on the phone with Cleveland. Cleveland was ready to pull the deal. They had all these draft choices in parachutes, Minnesota. Minnesota comes in and wow. Jimmy goes like this. Yes. They send Walker to Minnesota. Do mm -hmm. you know not one of those football players that they made that trade for with Minnesota ever played for the Dallas Cowboys? Jimmy wanted the picks mm -hmm. because the picks were going to create the football team. Everyone was questioning, even the Eagles. I mean, Buddy Ryan was talking all kinds of shit to Jimmy on the sidelines, one in 15. Hey, this ain't Eastern oh. Carolina guy. All that kind of stuff, man. He was killing him. And oh, Jimmy goes, man. don't worry. We're going to hang in. Even Dave wants that said, everybody's on a 34. Do you think we should get away from the 43? Jimmy goes like this. No, we're going to stick here and we're going to go with what we're doing. Three years later, won a Super Bowl. and mm -hmm. built one of the greatest dynasties of all time. All because he had complete control. Yeah, and that's the problem here is Jerry's got – And you have none of that now. Yeah. And so I guess we're getting ready. Uh, don't have too much time left here on your show. I don't want to hog it up. I see most of your Eagle chat is like, end this turd. <laughs> well, well, because you know what What the problem becomes with, with the Philly fans is that, you know, I pointed out all these things. It's funny, Mark. You know, I listen to a press conference, and it's like Philly fans hear a completely different mm -hmm. conversation than what was said. And you, 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 and I know what you and I do. We sit there and they go, he just said he, he controls the entire draft and he mm -hmm. picks the players without the coach and saying, but what they want to hear is that the coach has some say. And now we know the coach has no say. Okay. Yeah, and you're, and you're like, all people okay, do well, their jobs. I mean, and, and, and get this, like one thing you and I agree on these key fob warriors that are still in radio. Mm. And they want the accessibility. The reason that you're becoming so successful in Dallas is because you're running the radio guys out of business because those guys can't speak the truth on a station that Jerry Jones is on twice a week. Well, you, you are actually uniquely positioned because you were one of those radio guys and now you're on the other side. Which side do you like better being on? I like this you know, side. I, because I know that you, you see the thing I like about you and see when you shit on me. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm one that this is what I want people and shout out to everybody that's taking time out here. we got almost 300 people on, on Jacob sports and about 200 on my channel too, as well. I want people to take away one thing here because we have a problem in the world right now, which is. If you don't agree with me, my attitude is fuck you and I won't have a conversation with you. Get out of your comfort zone and talk to somebody who may have a difference of opinion. And what you might find out is they're a lot like you are. And see, that's the thing. Uh, I've only talked to you a few times, but I feel like I've known you for years. And you're going to speak the truth. 
And that's the thing that I love. Because, see, what's happened, like, with... Uh, By the know, way, Mark does have over 100 subscribers. 100,000 subscribers, <laughs> senor, so he does. A lot of times, you feel like there really is a narrative. And that's how I actually got started on doing this. Because I would hear things, it's like, that's bullshit. That's not actually how it went. But you would constantly hear the same thing over and over and over and over again. And so, I wanted to try and speak truth to it. Now you're on this side now and kind of looking at it. So you're basically saying it is true that they are towing the company line. Well, here's one thing though, that is troublesome that for me, it's always been a staple in my career. Doesn't matter if I'm on the radio, doesn't matter if I'm on television. I first started in TV actually. And then I got into radio and I've been doing radio for 34 years. And then now I've been doing this for the last three. And I still had the Philadelphia Eagles public relations department calling my bosses, making up all these wild accusations about me and saying things and taking things out of context to try to scare people. My company's not scared. And what they'll do is because I don't know what it is, Mark. Sometimes when I say something, it, it, it you know, it's just what it is, I guess. And it's something the way we say it. See, I was schooled by Rush Limbaugh. And Rush told me it's about content and delivery of content. And so I guess it's the way that I do it. But it's 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 what I find in this is that these people, the audience, tells me what they want to hear. No longer it's me wanting to tell them what I want to have them hear. And in radio, people's egos are so big mm -hmm. that they think they know what the customer wants. And they don't because they don't listen to the customer. That's the it's difference. Different. You know, in watching, the difference is, and here's the difference between social media and normal media. They are a one-way vehicle. They're putting out their opinion and so on. Things have evolved where it needs to be a two-way street. And you're recognizing that because it's the people out there that see bullshit. And they want to call it out. And they want to be, know that they're, they're being heard. Yeah, but Mark, people like to be, they would rather be lied to than told the truth because you know why? It's, it's a comfort true. zone. It's yeah. like watching your favorite movie a hundred times or listening to your favorite song a hundred times. It puts you in a comfort zone where it makes you feel good. I like to make people feel uncomfortable. See, to me, uncomfortable conversations, com uncomfortable conversations is truth. You know, I've been called, I've been called controversial. I didn't realize talking the truth is controversial. I don't really say a lot. I say some things and I have. Okay. And I've effed up a couple of times in some of the things that I've said, but they were mistakes. That's it. Q ball uh, super chatted and wanted you to ask me a question from earlier. And I, what I don't was want to. Go ahead, Q, what was it? What was the, the, um, the question? For, here we go. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, what plans would you have for the Cowboys if you were the GM? Likewise, um, well, for me, okay, first of all, I would lock up Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and say, listen, you guys aren't coming anywhere near the field or the team until Sunday, and you guys go have a big party in your box, okay? I'm going to go out there and – You sound like I, Jimmy. I mean, seriously, I don't know. I, listen, if you're paying me to do a job, let me do the damn job, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm getting somebody who can work the damn cap. OK, because that's half the problem. This whole thing is uh, you're being sold a whole bunch of bullshit when you look at the Cowboys spending 11 million dollars this year and you see Carolina and, uh, you know, New York spending 330 million. OK, there's something wrong here. Either you have fucked up in the past on how you're managing the money. Or you've just wasted the money or you don't know what you're doing. I don't know which one you want to take, but we have to fix that more than anything else. The next thing I am focusing in as opposed to the guys that sell jerseys, I am working on getting the guys that actually win championships. To me, Mark, that uh, Mark do you think they're more concerned on TV ratings and yes. merchandise and yes. revenue than they are? And, and more importantly, I say this, and I'm and, – this is probably going to be shitting on you again. No, it's you okay. You also called the Dallas Cowboys the Dallas Kardashians. Perfect name. 
I'll, I'll get my wife to make a shirt just like that. <laughs> That's the what Dallas the Kardashians. You think about it, though, Dan. When you talk about winning, I think about the teams that have won Super Bowls. Your Tampa Bay Buccaneers won a Super Bowl, got bad, won another one. The Rams won two Super Bowls. Hell, the Arizona Cardinals went to yeah. a Super Bowl. You know, the Green Bay Packers came back and they won a couple of them. And the Cowboys haven't done shit. Hell, the Detroit Lions have gone deep now in the playoffs. And during that time where the Cowboys have done absolutely nothing, there were billions more than everybody else. And every single day, there's somebody else doing another article on who's going to replace Dak Prescott. It's what, what did Jerry Jones say? They're winning in, in the battle of publicity. They're the most valuable franchise in the world. So why change? You're making money. Winning the Super Bowl, that's one year. You know, I, I had the, um, God, the head of um, Fox, the guy who founded Fox, and his name escapes me. Mm -hmm. And he, he's been on three or four times. <clears throat> and he founded the NFL on Fox and Fox Sports. Wow. And, okay. What's that? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've, I've had him on. You know what? When Michael Irvin and the White House and all that stuff were going on. No, not Rupert Murdoch, the guy who founded Fox Sports. Um, and he's been on, like I said, a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. and his name escapes me right now. But he said this. Jerry goes, man, I got to pull this thing back. I got to pull this thing back. And you know what he said? He goes like this. Don't you ever touch. David Hill. It's David Hill. That's yep. it. Thank you, Stevens. David Hill's been on like three or four times. The guy who founded Fox Sports, hired Madden, hired Summerall. And he goes, don't you ever touch my Dallas Cowboys, ever. It's the greatest theatrical show and reality yep. television show in the world. Don't ever change it. Those yep. words from David Hill, okay, who said it on my program. Don't you ever change the Cowboys. <laughs> And you know why? The value of your football team with the star will go up every year. Winning 12 games is not going to send your value up. What you do with your theatrical play every year. So think about this, Mark. No matter what you cover, yeah. no matter Dak, CD, Micah, well, that's it's part of the story. It's the gift that gives. Uh, you know, if the Cowboys are bad, everybody's still watching because they're so happy to see them go through misery. If they're winning, of course, everybody's going to be watching because they're pissed off. It, it, and, and that's the wins, Mark. Mark, 13 wins is not <sighs> going to get you. Um, it's not going to make Jerry Jones any more money. How, how can a guy, how can a guy have increased $150 million he bought the team for? It's worth $10 billion today. Right. Over 30 years. Boy, I'd like to have that investment. I, would I mean, definitely like to have that think one. about that. I mean, that's over tenfold on your investment of $150 million. And guess what? Since 96, is it? 97? Mm -hmm. You haven't done shit. And the team has gone up even more. That's what I'm saying. That's where it's crazy. Mark, next week is the draft. I will so, be there in Detroit. Now we might be just getting to the hotel at three thirty. So if we are going, we may. We, 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 if we have to move the time, we will. Yeah, but we will be broadcasting live from Detroit. We'll be there Wednesday through Saturday, and Fantastic. we are literally four tenths of a mile away from the stage at our hotel. So we are right smack dab in the middle of the uh, whole kit and caboodle. That's going to be fantastic, man. Thank you. We're good. You're going to be right there on the premises of the NFL draft. That's going to be awesome. I look it's, forward hey, to it's it. It's all we got. It's Cowboy. It's all we got. It's what? It's hope? the draft. That's all optimism? we Optimism? <laughs> Mark, think about that. The only thing you have is hope and optimism. Oh, shit. You don't have anything else? I know. No, we ain't got shit else. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got I'll tell you what, you do have the West End, though, man, and I do love the Palm down there. So, I mean, oh, and Hooters, yeah. I'm all good down there. There you go. I appreciate <laughs> it, as always, man. Um, you know, I feel honored, you know, knowing some of the people that have been here on with you and stuff, that you take a little old guy out of his mama's basement wearing his wife's panties and put him on the show. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. We'll catch up next week. Thank you, my friend. All right. Peace out.
You got it. That is Mark Holmes. Make sure you check him out. He uh, does a really great job with his. He's got. He does have over a hundred thousand subscribers. I didn't think we were. I thought we drilled them. Cowboys are going nowhere. You got three guys that are not going to win you a Super Bowl. You got three guys. I said it. You got those three guys are not going to win you a Super Bowl. Look, look at look at um look at Senor cute fireside chat. No, I thought if cute fireside chat was, yeah, you know, we don't really like to draft corners here. We do it a different way. I cover gaps or mistakes with gaps. Here's another one. Oh, no, no, we'll reset that shit at the top. I'm sorry. That was bullshit. Hey, Prince, what was bullshit? I ripped both. I wasn't kind to of the Cowboys. they never win. They haven't done shit in 30 years. What else did you want me to do? I'm not mad at him. You, I, I think you guys are thinking that I'm mad at him. Why would I be mad at him? I don't know him from a can of paint. I'm becoming friends with him. Oh, get this. Now you get a chance to say something about a guy who's been successful at what he does. But now what it does is you're deflecting. Look at how many people in here are acting like Howie Roseman. Deflectors off of the worst press conference getting ready for a draft I've ever heard from a general manager. I mean, you know Jerry Jones is a bullshit artist. Howie just pretends he's not. Okay. I'll be looking forward to Wednesdays now. I like Mark's perspective. CT Philly, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Both teams are not very old that deed tough to win. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Howie's job is on the line. Jalen, no, it's not. No, it's not. Vic Fangio and the clown boy Sirianni's job is on the line. Well, let's be honest. You need established corners that can play in the NFL. I'd rather have someone that has proven that can play in the NFL than gamble in the draft. I believe that's Xander's take. Okay? Brian, great host, Sills. You're awesome at what you do. Thank you. And I pre we appreciate you being here. Howie is the dumbest guy handling a draft BS. Everyone into thinking he's a genius. Um, Half of that is true. Can't pick defense. Can't. Can't. Okay? Still should have told Mark no worries after the 49ers kicked the Cowboys' ass. The Eagles will be next again. Well, 49ers beat the piss out of the out of the Eagles, too, and actually stole their pride and sent them home, and they laid down and quit. Compared to other years, Howie is on, on a short leash. I don't know, Jalen. Here, here's why, Jalen, he's not on a short leash. He's not on a short leash because of the contracts and the cap management he does. Like here. Dude. The Devontae Smith cap hits are spectacular. 2024, 8.1. For a guy you're going to eventually pay $25 million to? 25, 7.6. These are nothing burgers. 2026, 10.7. Really? 27, 14.8. And then a 28, 20.1, that's a lot. There will be a restructure in there probably in 27 or maybe even in 26. So those are really good for a $100 million contract. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hey, you talk about cuddling up. You should have seen those two love buttons over there at the Novacare Center yesterday snuggling up. Nice 
cup of hot cocoa. <laughs> oh, that was really well answered, Nick. Thank you, Howie. I really appreciate it. Hey, my knees have healed since I got off them when I was in Jeffrey's office. Thank you. <laughs> and you never have to worry about any hard questions being asked at any press conference for the Eagles because no one will ask them. You never have to worry about it because no one's ever going to ask you tough questions. What happened in the meltdown? Why did the team quit? <laughs> you ain't going to ask that question. Get you. You get, hey, you'll be put on suspension like that NPR host was put on suspension for calling out his network, just doing the right thing. <laughs> Fair and balanced. No. Don't I pay for NPR? Isn't that a taxpayer thing? Don't taxpayers pay for NPR radio, National Public Radio? Don't we pay for that? I, I, I thought I I thought our taxes pay for that. I, I just I thought our taxes did that. I don't know. I was just you know spitballing here. Seals, good job with Holmes. Can't stand Cowboy fans, but you have to respect a guy who can shine light on issues with his own team. No Kool Aid drinking. Hey, hey, Bob. No, no, no. What, what you get is you get – see, I was disappointed that LJ and some of the other guys in here didn't get their um, – didn't get their um, YouTube. Like Big Bill and them guys didn't get their YouTube cheerleading outfit um, uploaded to the Eagle website and how things are going great. I, just, I was like, you know – all them guys. All right, we're going to reset. Hit the like button. Again, the press conference was gold. Thank you, Eagles. Thank you. Ton of stuff to still, hey. <laughs> he doesn't like the question about Reddick. Love it. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.